Welcome, this time we will look at the pitch bend and modulation block replacement on the Waldorf Blofeld keyboard. These are the wheels in question and uh, my pitch bend started to behave oddly, uh, especially in the middle position it just started sending weird random values and uh, I attempted to fix it first but in the end I decided I have to buy a replacement part from Waldorf and we are going to fix it today and have a look at uh, what pitfalls there are. But first let's have a quick look at what was actually the matter. Um, thanks to Waldorf's support I was able to figure out how this pitch bend works. So we have basically a potentiometer and there is a plastic wheel fixed to it. I guess all the pitch bend wheels work like this. But the fact is that the pitch bend wheel only basically moves maybe 90 degrees uh, up and down. So um, it's not using all the possible path of the potentiometer. And so if there are some sketchy parts, you can kind of dial them out by turning the potentiometer to another position and then putting the plastic wheel back. And by doing so, I originally managed to move these dodgy positions out of the way. And when you switch on the keyboard, the resting position becomes the center. So actually you can move around these ranges quite a lot and then pick the best one for your uh, pitch bend usage. And that worked well for half a year roughly and then it started acting up again so I decided it's time to replace the whole part. But it was worth an attempt and also thanks a lot to Waldorf support. Despite me not being the original owner of this keyboard they really helped a lot. And uh, well the first problem is how do we unscrew this thing? It's uh, huge, it has a lot of screws. And the big screws in the middle, they are uh, the ones that fix the key bed in place. And originally I thought we don't need to loosen them. Um, and then there is along the outer edge, left and right, and also towards the rear, smaller screws that hold the base in place. So when you loosen those you can pull out the base. Uh, you don't need to do anything with the screws on the sides, they just hold the wooden cheeks. So I started uh, disassembling the unit by starting from the screws along the border, uh, so upper edge and on the sides. And once I had removed all those screws uh, it was time to pull it out and then I noticed that actually it's not going anywhere and the reason being that the key bed is secured to the main board with a short ribbon cable. So uh, try as you might you will not get this out of the way. You have to also remove the screws that hold the key bed in place. So uh, yeah unfortunately then later you also need to put them back in the right position and we will see it's a bit tricky. But anyway I had to remove all of those screws as well. That's uh, 10 more screws in total and after that the base is completely free and can be removed completely. Uh, at that point you of course will have a key bed that is floating uh, in the middle of nowhere. So you can see it here. It's resting basically on its head. Uh, so the inside is quite nice and you can see here the block with the pitch bend and modulation. You can see here that it's fixed in place with four screws and there is cables going from the block to the main board and then there's one more cable continuing to the key bed where it's fixed to a small plug. Uh, I assume this is for aftertouch but I'm not really sure what else it could be because the key bed is also then connected via two ribbon cables. But I assume it's part of the controller block so it could be aftertouch. Anyway so uh, the new one is exactly identical. We have the same colored cables, we have the same plug. So now it's only about getting this old block out of the way and replacing it with a new one. Uh, normal screws, you can see those on the right are a bit tricky. Uh, you have to go through the holes in the frame in order to reach those screws. Um, it's okay when you take them out but when you're putting them back it's incredibly difficult. I think you need a magnetic screwdriver and most likely you're not going to be able to use your uh, electric screwdriver either because those holes are too narrow. So once you have the block out of the way then it's easy to reach this plug with a set of pinchers we just pull it out carefully. So we don't need to remove the main board or anything like that, we just leave it in place. And then of course, unfortunately it's a bit out of the picture now here, but uh, then we also unplug 
this uh, simple continuation plug on the blue cable. And after that we can see uh, both blocks. And actually I noticed after that that uh, yeah this old block had a very loose pitch bend wheel and the new one had a very uh, nicely um, heavy uh, pitch bend. So uh, maybe it also just means that the old one was overused. So first thing we plug in this uh, mainboard cable set and then uh, as a next step we plug in the blue cable. Again sorry for not having that in the picture. Then we will have to fix this block in place and uh, we'll come back to that. As you can see uh, you have a bit of leeway left and right and you need to be careful to get them exactly through the openings so that the wheels do not scratch against the case. Uh, then the, I, I noticed that actually this old blue cable uh, was wrapped around one of the plastic shafts that will later accommodate the screws when we fix the base. So I decided to do the same thing so that we don't have this cable hanging around loose inside the uh, keyboard. So with that done, then basically replugged and uh, now everything should be ready. At this point you could already test it, um, but uh, I didn't bother because the key bed is still loose. So I wanted to first fix everything in place uh, before before I uh, make a test run. And uh, I think the very annoying part here is that uh, when you tighten the screws on the very very last few millimeters, um, this will kind of push the box to the left or to the right. So try as you might, if you try to center this box exactly over the openings, when you tighten the screws you will invariably have one of the wheels then touching the case. So it's a lot of back and forth, uh, untightening the screws, retightening them. And on the right side it's also easier when you use a screwdriver that is magnetic so you don't lose the screws. And now it's time to fix the base again and uh, yeah, small reminder that the key bed unfortunately now needs to be fixed first. So you need to align this stuff really carefully. The key bed is basically just floating there, it's not uh, fixed in any way to the case, it's really just fa uh, fixed to the bottom. Uh, so you put the bottom in the right place, you check that it's exactly over the shafts that take the screws and then you screw those in first in order to fix the key bed in place. Uh, and only after that we fix the base actually to the rest of the case. So after the key bed is in place and hanging correctly from the bottom then we slide in the metal sheet all the way and then we can fix the rest of the screws along the outside. And here it is in all its beauty and nothing is falling out so I hope everything is correct and uh, here you can see that it was a bit too tight on the left, the pitch wheel again was scratching a bit against the case so I had to disassemble it again uh, but in the end I got it done. I hope this video was of help, thanks for watching.